My father was working at, the, uh, at a bank. He was cashier at the Fremont National Bank. And he happened to hear uh, rumor that they were going to foreclose on this lumber yard. And so he had a friend from his church. Uh, they talked together. He was a builder in Fremont. And they decided to buy the business. And that's really kind of how Christensen got involved. Yeah, my father, he was much, he was involved in Fremont. He was a Fremont person. Uh, he would served on a number of boards, like the YMCA, and, and uh, he was active in his church. He was church treasurer of the church for, I think, 40 years or something like that. And uh, he was a very respected person in, in Fremont. He was a Dane. His, his father uh, immigrated from Denmark. He had a brother, he had, uh, I think, 12 brothers and sisters over in, in Denmark. And one was named Frederick and one was named Alfred. So uh, that's kind of where we got those names. It was wore a suit and tie to work, I remember that. Oh, my. Is that a suit and tie? Oh, yes. <laughs> up, up until the day, the last day here, he had a suit and tie on and he would not when we were in the coal business, somebody wanted a sack of coal, he'd go out and sack up a coal, sack of coal for him with suit. his suit and tie. And <laughs> that was just, that was the business attire. Let's go back to the fire of 1931. It was a uh, arsonist fire. And they did finally, it was a dentist from the town of Columbus, which is just west of Fremont. He got on the train, and every place the train stopped, he got off and started a fire. At that time, the, the railroad, the main line of the railroad was just a matter of a few feet from the lumber yard where, where it would stop. And so that was very convenient for him. After the fire, they, they you know, they. My father and his partner, they built a, a facility that was kind of the state of the art for the time, which, you know, fortune comes from catastrophe sometimes, and, and uh, that certainly helped. And that was really a, probably at, at that time a big start for our company, or a big asset for our company. I kind of remember seeing it myself. I think we were, the family was up on the, on the roof of the, of the lumber company because the train stopped just very, very close to that. A lot of people gathered around. I don't remember Roosevelt's speech. And, and, but, but anyway, uh, it was, that was an interesting time. It was here uh, on a campaign thing, in which a lot of your politicians use the, the train and stops. They could stop on every town along the way. Allow me to conduct any campaign in the accepted definition of that term. I consider it a public duty to answer falsifications with facts. I am an old campaigner and I love a good fight. <laughs> There was a government program that my dad and his partner took advantage of and were able to build a home in 1936. But we always kind of went back to that and said, well, it's the first home built in Fremont in, in eight years, I think, is how we kind of advertised it. And it was, it was really tough times. Well, I'd read up on that house and so it was, it was part of the FHA, the beginning of FHA, I think. The interest rate was 4% on a 30 year, it was uh, some of the same criteria we're practicing today, the beginning of that. Yeah, World War II and the Nebraska Ordnance Plant, they had a bomb plant in here, right south of Fremont, so that brought 
a lot of people then and that really relieved the city from the depression times and started occupying houses and then people needed places to live and that really got uh, things started in Fremont. And after of course World War II, all the veterans came home. Uh, they all kind of, many of them went to college and they started having families and they needed places to live and, and you know, things uh, developed from there. And things went, went with the economy. Uh, coal was important until people no longer had coal furnaces and, and then and we had, had to get out of that business. The lumber business was up and down, it was up after World War II uh, dramatically. I really didn't have an interest in the business when I was younger. I was interested in forestry. I loved, I loved the mountains and whatnot. I loved the West. Of course, forestry is, is nationwide and, and whatnot, but I worked in the summers uh, during high school and college years. It, it was a very interesting time, and I got through that, and I, had, I was ready to go the next year. I was employed, and, and they wanted me back, but Uncle Sam wanted me even worse. You know, when I joined the business in 1955, after leaving the service, uh, wasn't a particularly good business climate at the time. My father took me to the National Builders Show uh, when I first joined the business, just a year or two after I was. And the only thing I remember about that is visiting with an East Indian engineer, but they were a trust company. and. I think I spent the biggest part uh, of my visit at that show just visiting with this guy. I became really interested in it. And of course it took 15, 20 years before we really made able to do that. But that was kind of a triumph. And then what Tom has developed with our, uh, their business now, our component business now, is, is really uh, very, very valuable. I've always been interested in home building from, from being a little guy in the back of a station wagon watching houses get built up and down Dodge Street and so I was always enchanted with the home building business and wanted to be part of it. You know, I delivered when I was in high school and watched all the activities and I was always enthused with that even from even a roll back even further than that. I, they put me on job sites just to keep me out of trouble and I think I probably caused more trouble on the job sites than anything but I learned a lot. I swept. I think I got a quarter an hour. First nothing, and I might have got a quarter an hour, and then I've been messing around the lumberyard from way a little, just like playing around and sweeping and, and stacking lumber and uh, Man, you were carrying drywall. Well, you were lucky. My, my first job was sharpening pencils, and I didn't get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I did put some birdhouses together too. <laughs> It was just fun uh, learning to see what these guys could really do with their hands, you know. And I've always been enchanted with that and wanted to stay with it my entire life, take it to the next level. I represented the transition from 80s, 90s, 2000 and on. So, which um, is a whole different thing in itself. Of course, I was motivated for to be a contractor yard and um, and not consumer orientated. We still had the store, but it was didn't mean much to us. That was just basically selling contractors and then working our way into the Omaha market. That 81 to 85 area was really the tough, tough spot. We were just we knew we had to get out of you know outside of Fremont, had to move on. So <clears throat> there was nothing to sell. So uh, I remember we had a apartment job we'd sold. We had our component plant was doing pretty well. So we started well, we start, start selling the six, the siding, and uh, then our door shop. We remember starting that in 85 and sold our first uh, partner job. You know, the guy asked me if we had plenty of capacity. He said, yep, we sure do. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, had to get up and go on that one. <laughs> that was the beginning of our door shop, though. Yeah. And it never, we never looked back on that. 
So it did push us into the Omaha market and we sold apartments first and then we went into the single family, hired that one outside salesman. Uh, we had a couple others we hired thereafter and uh, pursued the Omaha market and it worked real well. You know, we've grown and we have an office in Elkhorn and it really helped. We started our second one in, in Lincoln in 2013 and that's really helped a lot too. Just having presence, just having a, a door and a showroom. Estimators and uh, salesmen in both offices and uh, it worked out really well just to have the presence of the staff there too. Components were marginally accepted in the Omaha market and then primarily for uh, track builders, believe it or not. They're the ones that wanted components. We started back in 06 and so we had a large uh, production builder that wanted to convert his business over to all components. So he was buying some of the components from a competitor and some of them through us and then so he went, goes, I want to make it all one and he goes, I'm just going to, I want to buy it all from you guys. And so that gave us the incentive to build the larger component building that we have today. And there's just one thing led to another. Uh, the industry just started converting and primarily the guys that were building like 50 and more. They're the ones that wanted to do components, they saw the value. But things were just starting to click, and uh, which the 90s were a good time to, for growth. It was just a great time for home building. When I mentioned earlier, we were the first company to come out with piggyback forklifts that really helped stimulate the, uh, the growth and the delivery processes, you know. So it wasn't long we got one, we got a second one there shortly thereafter. And that really enhanced getting the deliveries out. We were more or less three to one on the delivery versus a single axle flatbed truck versus a tractor trailer. And it uh, just really made us far more efficient alone by itself. And um, we could see the light. We could see the, the lights, bulbs were going off and the customers saw that innovation taking place. Nobody else was practicing it. And so they saw that, yeah, these guys are, are thinking about customer service levels and picking it up a few notches and so I think that's what people are starting to look towards us for the innovation. 99 is when I became president and um, my dad just one day said, I'm here. <laughs> when I came, became president and then he just said, here. <laughs> it was February or something of 99. Well, didn't, didn't we have a big presentation? No, we did not. No. <laughs> okay. just, there you go. <laughs> I was operations and then park, park president. And so I think dad just said, here, you just can take the president role and he would be chairman of the board. We had a board of directors then, so he was just as much involved as, as he really was. I, I always wanted to do something here and something in the construction business. I can remember as a kid, my dad picking me up in the, in the orange trucks to rake leaves and take leaves out. So as far as being a kid riding around the trucks and then just as of growing up, just being around here and just being a part of it, he's always been a part of it. So it's just always something that's been with me all along. So just try to take what I can, anything from him, ask questions, and then keep moving forward. Um, every day is a surprise. There's always something new. Still trying to figure out what that next big, big push or big thing is going to be. So oh, it's been interesting to watch him grow in the business and yeah, take hold. For sure, I just noticed he's got a real interest in the business been great seeing the next generation take off so I feel like my dad's really pushed the button on innovation for the company and and definitely has taken it to where it's at so leaves me in question what's the big step for for me for my legacy that's the thoughts in my head because to, to try to compare anything that he's done is I don't know it'll be tough I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of my son. I'm very proud of my grandson and all the employees involved in it. They do a lot and they're good. They're good at it. Been an interesting and a challenging business and it's been a fun business and it still is. I'm not involved anymore, but I sure like to watch what they're doing. It's, and they're doing great. Again, it's a reputation we've built up too. Whether it's a window, it's a door, into your door, extra door, you know, they, they know where the parts have come from, and that's important to them. Going through all these, the history stuff, and actually seeing a newspaper uh, advertisement that said 75 years, like, that was crazy, I thought myself, to let alone 25 years later, I'm a part of being the 100 years. So, um, and being a fourth generation, the generations we got into it, it's 
kind of speechless in a way. I know it's kind of tough to come up with uh, with words, but I think it's it's very exciting um, and just really says a lot about the company itself. Everybody has something to say. Everyone's got a piece of of the of the hundred year. So without anybody else, it, it, it wouldn't be a hundred years. So it's fantastic. Well, it means a lot. I didn't <laughs> I didn't think I'd be here to even celebrate it and. and and uh, yeah, it it it, uh, it means it really means a lot. And I think it means a lot to their to our employees too. When you, with you guys turning a hundred years company, I go. It's been an honor to work for you guys. I have enjoyed every minute of it, and now I'm just going to be here as long as I can. And it's been a great company to work for. Well, um, it means a lot to me is for being a part of it and helping with that and there is not very many companies that I know of that make a hundred years. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate all of them and say thank you for providing such a great workplace for all of us here. To the Christian family for the 100 years, thank you for the opportunity that you've given me, the values that you've taught me. I would like to thank Tom and his family, his, his dad, his grandpa for starting the company years ago. If it wasn't for, for him continuing on the tradition of Christian Salumber, none of us would be here right now. So it's been a great 26 years that I've been with you. And uh, not very often you get to work for a company that is going to be 100 years old. To be in a small town like Fremont and there's one company that is 100 years old or going to be, it's pretty impressive. And I'd like to tell the Christians and family thank you, most of all. Uh, Dave's a wonderful person, Tom's a wonderful person, the whole family's great. Obviously they've been in business since 1923, so that means something to the community as well. They're, they've been so kind to everybody, I mean, they truly, truly care about their employees. This is a wonderful company to work for, and we'll be in business for a long, long time. To the Christians and family, to all of them, Dave and Cynthia, and Tom and Jude, and, and uh, Chad, and even Jeff that works with me right now, uh, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our community and thank you for your 100 years here. And we're here and uh, yeah, it, it, it's a great feeling.